I enjoy building things and I buy tools to use them. I don't buy tools just to do tool reviews and I try not to recommend any tool that I would not use myself. A couple of months ago, I seen Matt over at 731, I think it was his prime day sale, was uh, saying how this was a good deal, a good saw, and I have been using the Win track saw for several years now. When I bought it, I originally had it in my mind, I was probably gonna upgrade to either the Makita or maybe even the Festool if I ever was able to get the funds up for it. But after using this thing, I'm like, there's no reason to upgrade the saw. And then when I seen Matt's video with the battery powered one, I'm like, well, maybe that would be a good reason to upgrade is to get the battery powered one. I just got through watching Matt's video reviewing this saw that he had uh, put out a couple of months ago to sell, which I bought through his affiliate link. So he got a little bit of the money from it. And I probably am going to get tons of haters in the comments on this, but I think he got a couple of things wrong. As you can see by the condition of this saw, and believe it or not, I tried cleaning it up before I start, started shooting this video. I use my tools and I've used these saws quite a bit. So my opinion is, is that Wynn has taken a lot of the issues with this saw here and has tried to improve them. From like this big handle, you know, they put a more ergonomic handle. The button here was just a, a flat button and then they've got like a nice, it's a, a real good feel to the button. And for that matter, this isn't like a hard plastic. This is like a rubber, very soft, not soft, but it's soft on the hand. It's a very good feeling saw to use. Now the original, a lot of people knocked it because it had the just the indent, not indents, but um, embossed markings for your degrees and also for your inches. Well, this has got the same except for they have put white paint on them. And for me, I think that these are completely adequate because even with uh, the original that's plain black, you get a little dust on it. It kind of highlights the numbers and I've never had an issue not being able to see my numbers and setting my depth. So the little adjustment knob, which is the same as on here, is, you know, you just loosen it up, it slides up and down, and then you tighten it up. I have cut hundreds of board feet with this saw. I have never once had this slip on me. So I'm not for sure what happened with Matt. Maybe he's got a defective saw. Um, I'm not saying it was user error, but I'm saying I use this saw all the time that had the same style and I've used this one quite a bit since I've got it and I must have cut, uh, I had about 30 or 40 live edge slabs that I needed to make straight boards with and every one of them I cut the edge with the, the these two track saws and did not have a single issue. So I'm not gonna go over all the different features, the blade lock and the scribe, because Matt did a fantastic job on that. But you see here, you have four knobs, and I think that for some people, even me who use this a lot, sometimes I'd had to think, because all the knobs look the same and were a little confusing. And basically, this knob that locks into the track is this knob right here and you have to lift it up and turn it and that locks it onto the track. They changed it from a knob just to a slide out. And now here you had your knobs that just pushed in, you know, a little rubber thing that went straight in. And then <clears throat> this was your anti-kickback. It's kind of a cam lock and it had some little like teeth on it so that that would grab the track whenever, you know, if you ever did get a kickback. With the plunge saw, I find that I do not get kickbacks that often. Really, um, I can't recall any time I've had a kickback, but what they've done here was instead of having the pins to lock it into the track that went straight, they've got them kind of like on a uh, pivot point here. 
so that whenever you rotate this little cam lock, it pushes it down tight. And so it can slide in the track. So we'll put this down here, lock it in. And then just like what Matt was saying is you want to, you know, you don't want to make this so tight that it's hard to operate. But at the same time, one, you're going to be pushing down on the saw. And so it's going to be going forward. So you're kind of pushing in with that. And then if it does kick back, you know, it's going to catch because those cam locks are going to grab it. And then this being locked in, you know, this is not uh, like the Ryobi. I wouldn't use that saw because of the way the Raven knife was on it. You had to completely take it off or you had to not be able to plunge cut. You had to start before your material. So I think on the kickback that this one is completely adequate and with a lot of time on the saw and actually using the saw, I don't find any issues whatsoever with this anti-kickback mechanism that they have. Another thing that I think that Matt got wrong is this is not a 20 volt tool. These are 20 volt batteries, but this is a 40 volt saw. So you are not supposed to run this with one battery because it is a 40 volt tool. And so I don't know if some of the problems Matt may have had was because he only put one battery in and was trying to operate this uh, way under voltage, but this is um, designed and it says right in the book that this is a 40 volt and the, but they, instead of having to have a special 40 volt battery, they're just using two of their 20 volt batteries, which are connecting inside of the saw to make one large 40 volt battery. And it says that the four amp hours are the minimum that you should use but whatever you use, you need to use the same amp hour so that like you can put two five amp hours on here, but you know, you should match them up because these are going to be basically tied together as one battery. Uh, just like what Matt was saying, you've got your speed control, which is, you know, fantastic. And he did show it, but he didn't mention that this thing has a brake on it. I mean, almost as soon as you hit the button, this thing stops. I mean, you know, it's less than one second from the time you let off. So that's not just winding down. That's an active break on it. The blade, like he said, is a good blade. So this is my holder for my saw. As you see, I do have a dual charger. And one of the great things about Win is that the dual charger if you buy it separately, is only $30. I also have some battery holders to hold extra batteries. And I went ahead and picked up an extra blade because these are good blades. Also, be aware they are the 20 millimeter Arbor, which is the same as like the Fest tool. And a lot of times they won't have those at Home Depot or Lowe's. So if you was to hit a nail and mess up your blade, you need to be aware that one, buying it straight from Win is much cheaper and you get a great blade. This has got this, uh, I don't know what kind of coating, it's a non-stick coating. It works extremely well and they are relatively inexpensive, especially for the quality that you're getting. So this is the same as the other. This isn't an adapter. This is so that you can angle your hose away from the saw, or if you want, you can angle it back the other way. And then the inside of this will fit a fest tool and then I have just a plain old um, shot back cobalt and it will go on the outside. So they have this to where it will fit most hoses. The Rockler hose will go on the inside just like the Fest tool or if you have the larger ones, they go on the outside. So this is a two inch thick piece of poplar. Now, if you read in the book, the book says basically that this saw can cut a piece of two inch wood. And again, I'm not saying anything against Matt, but if you notice when he cut on the 45s, that the blade was not able to penetrate all the way through the wood. I forget what it said in the book. It's about an inch and a half is the maximum depth of a 45. So we know that this is a 
low-end saw, it costs less than, you know, the batteries of these other tools. And yet, you know, we're trying to push it way past what the manufacturer says the recommended is. So if you cut this uh, to the size boards that the factory says it can cut, you will not have any issues with this saw. So I don't know what Matt did, but as you see here, this thing is absolutely perfect. There is zero light coming through. I mean, my cut, I mean, that is a piece of two inch. So we've got a piece of, what's that, about an inch and three eighths. Um, this is hickory, uh, which is much harder than walnut. I don't have a piece of two inch walnut laying around, but also this piece here, you see there's a knot right there on the side and we got a big old knot right there. So on the Jenka scale, I think this is close to twice as hard as walnut. And then on top of that, let's see what happens when we try to cut through these knots. So, I mean, you can look at the timestamp below. It only took like 35 seconds to cut this board. So I don't know why you would need to go a whole lot faster. I mean, you know, if you really need to go faster, you should put it on your table saw. But the main thing I use the track saw for is the breaking down plywood. So that's probably 80, 90% of what I cut is plywood with the track saw. And then if I have a rough edge because I get a lot of rough lumber, I'll use it to get a straight edge on one side and then I cut the other side with my table saw. Okay, so now I have not cleaned up the saw. I haven't actually picked it up off the table from um, cutting both that two inch board and this inch and three eighths board. And now there is some dust on this track saw, but if you cut with a skill saw or something, you know, there is actually, in my opinion, very little dust left on the table, uh, the track, you know, I'm looking down through here, you know, I'm looking up on the table. Now I haven't blowed this off. I've cut that two inch board and an inch and three eighths board. And while this does have some dust, it's not a hundred percent. I seen that coming off of Matt saw and I'm not for sure if he hasn't changed his filters on that Festool dust extractor, but this little, um, you know, it's actually the shop vac, you know, put out by um, um, Lowe's. It's sucking much better than what that uh, Festool did. Uh, okay, so once again, you know, that to me is as close to a perfect 90. You know, I know Matt showed his with the gap, but um, I'm not seeing any light at all coming through there. That looks like a perfect 90 to me. And then even when I hit this big old knot here, I couldn't tell a difference with the saw. I know I'm gonna get some haters out there and I know most of you watch 731, so you know exactly, you probably already seen the video that Matt put out on this. And while I respect Matt, and I think on most things he gets right, I definitely uh, have a different opinion on this saw than him. And I, and he said that it was good for plywood because it does, it gives a fabulous, fabulous cut. Let me pop these batteries out here. And part of it is this blade, the uh, blade here. And now I have cut, I don't know how many boards with this blade. And you see this coating is still almost like brand new on it. So I don't know what kind of coating that they have put on that blade, but it works absolutely fabulous. The little saw works absolutely fabulous. Now, is it a Festool? No. Can you buy it for $100? Yeah. Can you buy a Festool for $100? No. Um, you know, I got this saw 
two batteries and a charger for like $180. So I looked at getting the Milwaukee track saw and I want to say just the batteries alone were over and the charger was $300. So I would have paid about double just for the batteries and that's not including the price of the saw plus the Milwaukee will actually go on these tracks but to use the anti-tip you have to use their proprietary track which is way more expensive than this uh, powertech track which i have had zero issues with i use this saw all the time and i just felt that a person who never used the saw that pulled it out of the box he's been using a lot more powerful saws but again this thing is 40 volt it's only you know 5000 rpm so it is not a super fast so you can't force the cut but uh, all the videos were i left them at real time so you can see just how long it cut i have had no dragging with them and i've been out here cutting several cuts tonight to uh, make this video and you see both of my batteries still fully charged this thing will cut i don't know how many board feet but it will cut many many boards on a single charge and then again it's only thirty dollars for a dual charger all you out there from the 2x4 nation let me know how i'm wrong and i'll be more than glad to take any criticism you got just leave it in the comments and until then i hope everybody has a wonderful afternoon